Hi guys, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm hanging in there. I'm getting a little stir crazy, I won't lie. I was right. like listening this morning about like what I want to say. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I want to get back in a plane. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danielle, you you miss, you, I think it's okay to say you miss traveling. That's a I real do. feeling. I do. I'm starting <laughs> to get, I'm getting a little nutty and <laughs> kind of like you. I've had, I think I had my bad day about three or four days ago. And I just got off the phone with a friend and he was having his bad day today. And I was like, you know, <laughs> it, it just happens. <laughs> like we're all, we're all right there. We are. And I think yeah. that, you know, um, I try to say I don't have bad days. I have bad moments because it yeah. was, yeah. I started out having a great day, but then something just happened and made me feel sad for a minute. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I try and get out of that feeling. Uh, you look very tan. I know. <laughs> I I was gonna say the same thing. You've gotten blonder and tanner. So quarantine. <laughs> quarantining in South Carolina isn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> um, we've had really beautiful weather. And uh, for those of you who know me, we just moved into a new house last year. And one of the upsides to this is that I actually I have been home more in the last month than I have been the entire year last year. So um, I'm enjoying it. I'm trying to, I think this will probably be the one and only time you guys ever see me with this much color. <laughs> I'm about to turn 40 this year, so no more sun after that. I understand but. that. Yeah, Understood. Rest in like, tan and beautiful, and I just keep putting on more sparkles. I figure that'll help. <laughs> I'm just going to embrace it right now. I thought, you know what, I, there's a lot of treatments I can do this next year <laughs> to kind of reverse the tanning process. Oh, you look great. You look great. Well, we're excited to have you. So oh, what are you going to share with us today? So, you know, a lot of, I've gotten a lot of, yeah, I've been doing a lot of lives and I get a lot of DMs and I was kind of listening to you guys talk earlier, you know, it, exactly. You hit the nail on the head, Sherry, when you said, get out and consult with people as much as you can now, yeah. because you're so right. I, I, everyone's coming. They're going to be. First of all, we're, we're condensing the amount of hours that we actually are physically able to work into, um, you know, well, we're, we're condensing all the existing clientele that we had in five weeks into the physical amount of hours that we're able to work. So I think it's super important as hairstylists um, for our mental health to you know, start kind of planning that kind of stuff now and getting in touch with your guests because as your point, we don't necessarily have to mix up their formula, but if we know what we're walking into and we've already had those like feel good conversations and touch bases with them, you know, it's really going to only help us in the long run when we get back into the salon. I mean, we, every minute's going to count. And I know because I'm a hairstylist and I still do clients is that we give everything to our guests. And the one thing we, we tend to take on a lot of energy and we take on all the emotion and you're going to, as a hairdresser, you're going to want to not skimp on that. And it's going to be really hard, I think, for everyone to manage the balance between doing hair, being there, you know, being there to take on the emotions that we do take, mm -hmm. and then also being balanced and mentally healthy ourselves. And I, so, you know, same kind of thing is just reaching out to everyone ahead of time. And that brings me into talking about you know, upstyling and wedding season, because as you said, you know, we're approaching wedding season and we have probably, if you're a wedding stylist, you've secured and de have deposits already down and people don't really change their wedding date. I'm sure that there's going to be some flexibility there, but you know, if we're getting, if we can get married now and do online weddings, you know, mm -hmm. I, I foresee that happening. And whether this is, 
something that will be able to, what, whether I teach you something that you'll actually be able to physically use when you get back into the salon to speed up your uh, bridal styling, or if it's something that you can actually show your guests via a FaceTime consultation on how to do something very simple that could make their look look very elevated. Um, I think this is kind of how I want you guys to kind of conceptualize what I'm going to show you. So this can be as advanced as you want it to be. And I'll kind of break that down as I go. Or it could be literally as simple as you would want it to be in a format that you could do this on a FaceTime with a client and get them through their wedding wedding days. And I actually had an interesting conversation and I, I didn't even think about it when I was planning this uh, format, but I had an interesting conversation with a celebrity hairstylist friend of mine, uh, David Lopez, and he had, he was very honest um, on one of my lives and he does a lot of celebrities and he said that he's actually been doing celebrity tutorials um, via FaceTime because these celebrities are still having to do their photo shoots for magazines um, and they're having photographers come into their house and they're like, I don't even know, like, I don't do my own hair. I don't, you know, like, how do you get that effortless, like undone look? So he's been doing FaceTime tutorials for his celebrity clients. And I thought that was really genius. And I was like, you know what, like there's, that's a whole, you know, that's a whole avenue of thinking as far as like, we just got to go with the flow right now and people are going to need things like now or yesterday. So how can we deliver? So, um, I, 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 and I want to keep this really simple. So one thing that I will talk about coming, if we do get to go back into the salon and we have weddings, we're going to want to pre have a con a conversation with the bride. Right. And we want to talk to them about like coming in with their hair prepped because even though this is very important in our old traditional weddings, it's even going to be more so now, especially because you might be, you know, people might even be moving their wedding dates and you might be doing multiple weddings on one day. So we've got to get like upstyling fast, effective and efficient. And just like, we don't have time to curl. And I, I talk to a lot of um, hairstylists and I teach a hair mapping class. And I always ask the question, how many of you guys, when you have a wedding or a formal style pickup, your one inch Marcel curling iron the minute your client sits down and you curl every section of hair. And most, I would say 70 to 80% of my classes are always like, yeah, totally. That's exactly what I do. And so I really teach my classes completely untraditional and I don't even have them use heat because I'm like, let's start thinking outside the box and get away from the crutch of that one inch Marcel and let's start doing upstyling without the use of heat. And, you know, then you can add heat in as you go. Okay. So as you guys are working on this, or those of you at home that are working on a mannequin right now, don't worry so much about the prep on the mannequin. You know, this is going to be more about the breaking down of the sectioning and how to apply the different techniques. And then, you know, you can elevate that to the next level prep it yourself, or you can talk to your guest about how you would want them to come into the salon prepped for that day. Okay. So again, honesty is the best policy. I think when we get back into the salon and we just have to have open communication, right? So ex explaining to them that, you know, times are, times are tight. So we got to have prep. Now, one of the, one of the um, things that I always have in my arsenal for, upstyling because not every guest likes to prep their hair the same is dry shampoo. Um, because we know that if we at least have dry shampoo, we're not going to have oil. And I think that's really important no matter what brand you work for or what brand you're using, make sure that you have a dry shampoo for your wedding style arsenal or your prom styling arsenal. You might not always have to use it, but it's super good to know. Um, always shake these up really well because sometimes on brunettes, depending on the brand, they can get a little powdery. So the last thing we want to do is on the wedding day, our bride comes in and she's got her hair foundationally prepped, but her roots are a little oily. And now we spray something without shaking it. And she's a little powdery white. 
Uh, I did that to my ex-husband at Naha, and I had so many people coming up to him going, oh, I didn't know you had gray hair. And I was like, (laughs) 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 true story. (laughs) Um, So obviously shake it up really well, spray it where you need it. She doesn't have oily roots, obviously. But um, if I did have a guest with them, I would want to make sure I did that first. Then there's a couple ways to determine the texture of the hair. Now, if I told her to set her hair or come in with it a little bit smooth, great. If I needed to hit it really quick with an iron, for the way I'm gonna section this and show you guys, I would literally do it in ginormous sections. I wouldn't worry about like really getting curl in there because the curl isn't going to show. Like we're just like smoothing the cuticle. So I would take as big of sections as I could to control the hair. And I would just take my iron, my curling iron, and I already did this ahead of time to save a little time, but I would literally just work it with my hands and just curl this entire front section of her hair just to smooth it. So I'm gonna move a little closer. All right. So again, I'm just trying to gain control over the texture. I'm not trying to worry about so much setting the curl in there or anything like that. All right, so let's talk about breaking this down. A lot of the time we get our one inch curling iron out, set the whole thing, and then we start in the back and we just start pinning up hair. And we have no, we're, we're, we see a picture and we're like, okay, I know how to accomplish that, but I, I'm just gonna keep pinning until I start creating a shape that's mimicking of that picture. And you're wasting a lot of time. So if we break down the picture into a hair map, it's the easiest and most efficient way to get hair up quickly. And really the map that I always use, and it pretty much will match on every single Pinterest picture or wedding picture or anything that somebody brings me with a little shift of adjustment, is this orbital sectioning. So with that said, I'm going to basically take my circular section right around the top of the hair. So right where your your comb would leave the head is about where I would start that circular section. And I'm just gonna go right to about the occipital bone. And so I'm basically just taking one circle here. And I'm going to secure that. Now, if this was a style that someone brought me that was more of a French twist and sat up higher, my orbital or circular section that I just took would literally just shift forward into more of a horseshoe section. And that's really the difference. So if you think about a circle in the circle that I just took, if I were to shift this forward, because the hairline is pretty much straight across, I'm basically just cutting off that other roundness to the circle and I'm, I'm getting a horseshoe. So pretty much every picture that I've been able to find within a bride that's brought me anything or a prom comes in either of these two sections. So it's orbital sectioning. And if you need to shift it forward because the hair lives higher, just shift it forward into a horseshoe shape. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to secure my first section. And I, I use a lot of elastics in upstyling. And the reason I use a lot of elastics is because they're very flexible. And I can, I'll be able to go in and kind of pull this and manipulate it without it being locked in. Now, if this was, if I bobby pinned this in, in like an X marks the spot, and we'll talk about that in a second, I'm going to be kind of committed to it. But if I just elastic this in, I'm definitely going to have some more flexibility. So I'm just going to place my elastic at the bottom of my orbital section. And I'm not going to worry about ruching this too much. I can give it a little bit of ruching because I know she's going to want a little bit of organicness, but I can go in there after I get this whole style and kind of give it more volume. Now, this is a great tip, too, because I've done it a million times where you've done an entire bridal style and they're like, I love everything about it, but I wish I had more volume in my crown. 
And I'm like, well, I've, there's like a hundred pins in there. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> but with this, you can totally get more volume in there. No problem at all. So quick and easy. From here, I'm going to divide the front to the back. So by that, I'm just going over the ear and I'm just kind of pushing that hair away. I'm not going to get all crazy. And I'm just going to divide the front to the back. So my back section now is basically two sections. I've got, well, it's actually three sections. I've got my ponytail that I've already secured. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to clip that out of the way so you guys can have a good visualization here. And then I've got my, my nape section. So I'm going to divide my nape section into two. So right down the middle. Now, if this was a site, this is where customization always comes into play with hair mapping. This is just a map, right? It doesn't matter that it, it doesn't mean it's a holy grail of like every single style. But if you understand this, you'll be able to really adjust it accordingly. So I'm breaking it down into front and back sections and basically quadrant sections in that matter. But you can break this down into three sections. You could break it down into an uneven section where you've got the majority on the right side and a smaller section on the left side. You can also break this down into two sections and then subdivide it horizontally. It's okay. So this is just an idea of getting you thinking about hair mapping. So if I was gonna do a Shing Yang, and I was going to direct all this hair. Maybe she wanted a little bit of an off set yang. And I'm going to come over here. I would probably just give myself a little bit more on the, that left side where I'm going to place the yang Because I need a little bit more bulk to create the yang. And that right side, I'm going to use just more of a drape. Okay. Now, again, this is just for that sake. Now, if I wanted a middle, like if I wasn't trying to do an offset chignon, it doesn't matter. You know, you can do even, even sides here. So since I don't want to curl this or use heat, I'm going to create a twist. So I do see a, twisting creates texture in the hair and it also creates a cylinder shape. When you braid hair, you flatten hair, okay? So if I were to do a... See that? I like yes. that. Okay. okay. I'm condensing the hair flat on a three-strand braid. So when I pull this out, even if I'm you know, ruching it and creating volume, I'm still creating a flat surface. So braids create, they, they, they compact hair, which is good if you have somebody with lots and lots and lots of hair and you need that compactness. But what I'm going to do is I want to have more cylinder or volume because my, my bride has finer hair. So if I do just a typical twist, which I'm going to just do a two strand twist. So I'm just twisting to the left with my left section and I'm crossing it over the top. And so my right hand, it does nothing but hold hair. My left hand's the one that's always twisting. So twist on the left towards the face, cross over, twist on the left towards the face, cross over, twist on the mm -hmm. left. And again, working quickly guys, because I don't care what this twist looks like because I'm going to pull it all out. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm literally just creating a cylinder shape. So you don't want to nitpick your work here. You just want to get that twist in. Like you're not going to see any curling and you're not going to see any twisting. So it doesn't need to look perfect. You're just doing it to create texture and volume. Okay. So I'm going to now, I've got that twist going and now I'm just going to start ruching it out and I'm starting from the bottom or the tail because I've got more uh more give that way if I start from the top it's just not gonna give as much and you're then you're gonna be working twice as hard
hard because then you got to go back and uh, re-pull everything that you just pulled out. So. Danielle, we have um, a question, which is what kind of comb is the, I, I'm assuming it's the pink one with the little, yeah. 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 So this is from my girlfriend, actually, uh, Mariah, who, who uh, makes pink pewter. And it's called the Never Let Go Comb. So it's cool because you can actually feed it through your hand and still work. Um, sometimes I'm just not that coordinated. <laughs> I'm just going to spin her a little bit. Um, I love this comb, though. It comes in a, um, a, metal, a metal end as well. So she's got great stuff. And say the name again for us, Daniel. It's Pink Pewter, and Pink. you can order it online at pinkpewter.com. Yep. Right. All right, so this side section I'm actually going to subdivide because I want to have a little bit more flexibility in this veil, and I don't want it to be severe. I want to kind of create like a little bit of a sweep. So I'm just going to subdivide that back section, the back right section, and... I'm going to show you another twist. So you guys just saw that I did a two strand twist over here yeah. to create a little bit more bubbling. And with this, I'm actually just going to twist towards that two strand braid and ruche it with my fingers as I go. And you'll be able to see again that this is just creating a little bit of texture and a little bit of volume. So I'm not worried about this yet because that's gonna, that's just gonna fill in where I need. This is one thing that I had to learn. I'm such an OCD person and I wanted to always like control, like make sure I knew exactly where that hair was gonna go at every precise moment. And what I realized is that like my upstyling goes a lot easier when I just let the hair do what it wants to do. And I don't have to nitpick it. I can just kind of with mapping, I know what section I'm working in and then I can just kind of let this hang and I'll go back to it later. So I always know where I'm at in the head. Now, again, next section, I'm just going to take this and you'll see I use my hands a lot as well. And I'm going to use my Biolage Raw um, Frizz Control Spray to just kind of smooth some of the frizziness. But a lot of the times we always want to pick up a brush or a comb. And I use my hands a lot, especially with these like a little bit more organic textures. Um, I feel like my hands kind of have a lot more control. So again, I'm just, I took that whole section and I'm just twisting it to the left towards that chignon. And I'm going to go in and just kind of slightly ruche it. And then once I get a nice, beautiful shape, I'm gonna go in and bobby pin it. So you can see that literally in three quick sections, I've completely controlled this entire bottom nape area all under the occipital bone. And I can't tell you how many stylists, when I go teach this, they're like, oh my gosh, I spend 30 minutes trying to do that section. And then I get so focused on it and I'm rushing through the top because most people have so much hair down here. The mannequin's a little different, but this is where the majority of the hair on clients live. So if we can conquer this in quick three sections with mm -hmm. a couple twists, we're like, we're good to go. So after I get that pinned in, I, I like to show this technique too. We don't need a hundred million bobby pins. All we need is an X. So I'm basically just X marks the spot. I've got my one bobby pin here. I'm going to take my other bobby pin and I'm going to make sure that I X it across. And that's going to lock in that bobby pin. Now I've got the tail still hanging down and I've got these ends out. I'm not too worried I want to create the chignon, but remember guys, this is all coming back still. So I don't need to make all this perfect. I just want to keep moving through this style. And that's the beauty again of mapping this out. You can move quickly through this. So I do want to create the chignon though, at least um, to kind of know what it's going to look like. Now, if I'm not committed to it, I use a hairpin. So hairpins can be, 
you can literally kind of take this and wrap this around and stick a hairpin in there and not worry that I'm going to damage the style. If I don't like it, I can take the hairpin right back out. If I stick a bobby pin in there, it's very grippy. It's in the UK, they call them grips. So if I stick a bobby pin in there and I go to pull it out, it could pull something I don't want out. So hairpins are great. Um, I use them to like expand hair, but I also use them to kind of just place hair until I've completely committed to it. So for the sake of this, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put a hairpin right there. And I'm going to move on because I know that this is going to come over this and we're just going to continue to bulk this up. And would you normally use a stool when you're doing an upstyle? Um, I do. I, I, I do sometimes and I stand sometimes. So like when I'm working in the back of the hair, I usually do sit because I like to be a little bit more like mm. balanced and focused. And then when I do when I start working in the front, I, I tend to stand over the client and use my mirror a lot. Mm. So, you know, I think with balancing and upstyling, like mirror, a mirror is like a must, you know, or you have to have like, sometimes we don't get that luxury when we're on, uh, on site with a wedding. So like, I'll, I'll keep walking around my bride, but like, I always keep checking from the front. So all right, so I'm going to drop my ponytail now. This was my, my top section. And again, now I might eventually, I just hair pinned this because I might want to take that out because I've got this tail down too. And I might want to put the chignon over that. So I know though that there is literally three sections here. And now I'm working in this middle section or my tail section. And I can undo that in a heartbeat and like move things around, which is the beauty of hair mapping it out. So again, I'm going to take my tail and because again, I want to more, I want to create a little bit more bulk. My, my Josephine is a little, she doesn't have quite as much hair. So I'm just going to do my two strand braid. So again, twisting on the left side, crossing over the top, twisting on the left side, crossing over the top. Don't overcomplicate it. We're not trying to create the perfect twist. We're just trying to fold and wrap and secure hair. Again, I'm going to use an elastic and I always use an elastic on my ends of my twist because then this way I can expand it. If I use bobby pins, I'm going to be locking it in. So using an elastic and then from the bottom, I'm just going to start pulling this out. And as I go, if you guys have any questions, just type them out. Let me know. All right. Now, from there, I actually am going to purposely move on because 90% of hairstylists are going to want to make this perfect and figure out all of this before they move on to the rest. And I purposely want you guys to get out of that whole mindset. So that's what slows us down. We get nitpicky and perfectionism and then we like work, 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 and then we get to the sides and nine times out of 10, they don't flow into this as well. Then we've all done that. We've all kind of gotten to the front and we're like, Everything looks so disconnected from the front to the back. It's because we finished the back, made it perfect, and then we started on the front. And it's like, wait a second. We didn't think about it as like a flowing, a flowing style. So I'm going to go on her heavier side, which is this way. And I'm just going to, you guys can see that this is her heavy side of the part. So she's going to wear her. She's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's funny. Mannequins always have more hair in the front, which is so opposite of clients, and then less hair in the back. So <laughs> it's like, wait a second. All right. So we're going to go on. I'm going to start on our heavy side. And I find kind of what Sean was saying earlier, like diagonal partings always create more of a natural, like flowed highlight they do the same with upstyling. So I always take on my side sections, I'll take a diagonal forward parting. 
but I'll always move back. So again, I'm just going to use my Biolash Frizz Control Spray to kind of control my frizz. And then if I was standing or if I was working around without being on camera, I would, I would just keep moving my body in this way. So, you know, upstyling and body positioning is super important. If I came out here and start twisting and I hold the hair straight out, then when I go back, it's going to create a really severe buckle. But if I am holding it back here when I'm twisting, I'm holding it where it naturally organically is going to fall. So I have more control over the way that I can ruche it over. I can visually see exactly how it's going to lay rather than holding it here and twisting and then just directing it back. Sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't flow as well. Okay. So I'm directing it back, ruching this as I go and then letting that fall in. So you can see too that this is gonna start melting into the back. And this is my little bobby pin trick for the day. So if you take your bobby pin and you open it up and you put all of the hair in it, which I know it will definitely lose its grip. It's not gonna be as grippy, but trust me on this. Put all of your hair in that bobby pin and then twist your bobby pin and stick it in. You're going to hide your bobby pin. That was actually Martin Parsons was the gentleman who taught me that. So that's my little bobby pin trick of the day. And then again, I'll always go in and X marks the spot on my bobby pin. So I'll go find that bobby pin and cross another X. I love, I love that tip and the X marks the spot because the rare occasions that I attempt to do an updo, my biggest <laughs> things are always the bobby pins. And then also I love just like you're talking about how like you don't have to have so many bobby pins. Like you're just doing an X and you can tell yeah, you have a lot of control. Over what's over what's going on. Honestly, it's it will if you lock those bobby pins in with an axe, a lot of the times the bride's like, Oh my god, I could not get those bobby pins out last night. So the hair's not gonna go anywhere. The hair's not gonna go anywhere at all. Now I'm taking my next section and same thing, I'm just kinda twisting it back, ruching it as I go. And I purposely also, I did run a quick curling iron over this, but I did it in like five minutes, guys. I didn't want this hair to be perfectly prepped because I don't believe that that's fair. <laughs> you know, I, she had a, she had, she has a little micro in there. I don't know what the hell that's from. That's from another class, I guess. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, she came from the box in the closet. So like, I, I don't. I don't want to teach you something that isn't achievable. This is literally like, this is achievable with somebody coming in with like hair blow dried like mine or hair that's needing a little work. This is not to do with like a perfect foundation. So, all right, just again, twisting this out, ruching it as I go. And then pinning it in. And on this heavy side, I've got about, I've got one more section, but I'm going to move on to the lighter side of the part now. And I'll, I'll organize that last section on the heavy side of the part at the very end. So making sure that I mark, X marks the spot on those bobby pins. It's not going anywhere. I'm giving it a good tug that is not moving. And you guys can see how this is coming along. All right, and you guys can see too, I'm talking, 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 but can you imagine if I wasn't talking how fast this would go? I mean, this is like, I, one of the things that I, my background and I live in South Carolina, so we have a lot of bridal, it's a destination bridal place. And I learned very quickly in the world of weddings that somehow, <laughs> 
our industry out of all the industries got a little gypped <laughs> with wedding hair. Cause it's like you buy a white dress. It's 10 times the expense. You buy a cake. That's a wedding cake. It's the same taste. It's the same ingredients, but it costs three times as much wedding hair. I'm like, why do they compare it to prom hair? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted, you know, I can only be competitive in a market with price, but I, and we are, we were the more expensive salon, but what I could really do is be really competitive in time. So we could turn out a couple weddings every Saturday. And my stylist learned how to do up styles in 15 minutes. And they were fast and efficient with them. And um, no one, you know, no one, you, we actually charged more because brides were happy that they didn't have, like they could not spend the entire day sitting around getting their hair done. So literally just finishing off again, taking that diagonal section, using my hands again to manipulate this hair and twisting it towards the center. As I'm twisting it, I'm just going to ruche this out. And the ruching can be as detailed as you want or as organic as you want. You know, I always say that a little bit more detailed is better and then you can make it a little bit more messy. You can always pull this out because there's a lot of elastics in it, but, and if you know you're really gonna pull it out before you pin all these twists in, elastic the ends, elastic the very end. And then that way you don't have to worry about if you really wanted to expand this. All right, almost there. Again, just flipping that in, securing it right there. And I'm leaving out these ends because A, I don't mind them, and B, I'll, 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 we'll finagle and we'll teach you a little trick on those too. I'm really just trying to get the bulk of this up. All right, so this is where I would use my mirror for sure. Make sure that before you secure this, because this is really what they're going to see is that they're happy with it. Now at this time, you're going to get a lot of brides that are like, Oh yeah. Okay. Let's side sweep this. You know, I want something around my face. I always ask like, what's the weather? Like, you know, like how does your hair hold a curl? Cause if it's going to be like this thing floating and stringy, why bother? Um, but this is also a time you're, you can really like get some height in here. So if she right now is already like, oh, well, I want some more height up here, I can take my tail comb and start pulling this to get more volume. I can also take my hands and just start ruching this. Because it's got an elastic in it, and that's how it's secure, I have the flexibility to do that. I don't have to worry about this being so tight on the crown that it's not going to move. So I can kind of give her a little bit of volume in here right now. A lot of the times too, I love my texture builder, which is like a dry volume spray. I actually don't encourage a lot of hairspray while I'm working because the more hairspray that you actually put on the hair, it hairspray sits on the outside of the hair and it starts getting very spider webby. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time people will keep spraying, keep spraying as they're working. And by the time they get to the end, they've crossed this little peak of like, I had control over the hair and now all of a sudden the hair all looks like messy. And it's usually because of the hairspray. So I use dry texture sprays height riser which is a powder like the volumizing powder is a lot for upstyling um anything that's dry and d gets a little texture but might not lay on the top of the hair okay so i'm gonna go in and finish this side again just using my hands using a little spray to control the texture if she wants a little bit of 
veil or whatever. Sometimes I'll go in and try to take like a little bit of an organic or even a weave. Like Sean was saying, like just weave out a little bit of hair. That keeps it not so severe. So, you know, a lot of the times we, sometimes we don't even know why we do certain things, but putting technical aspects into it, like weaving out the hairline to create a little bit of softness and flow will be better than taking a slice. Cause then if you just slice it out, you're like taking a chunk. But if you weave out a couple of pieces, you're just creating a little bit of like softness around the hairline. So I just wove out, just like I was gonna do a highlight right on her hairline. And then I'm gonna take this section and again, pretend I'm walking around her. Like I would do this in the direction that I want to work and ruche as I go. And then also because I've mapped this out. I can definitely see, like I was holding it up here, but maybe it looks better down here. You know, if you can get a general idea of what the style is that your guest wants from a picture, then you can, you can create the shape and customize it to their neck, to their structure. You know, not everyone has a perfect, beautiful, long neck, and not everyone has a perfect hairline. Some people have to have a little bit more fill-in down here. Some people don't look good with all of this exposure. You know, it, mm -hmm. their hairline might be severe, or they might have a thicker neck, and they want to actually soften it. So, you know, this is also giving me visual to be able to better complement my guest. So I'm going to come in here and I, I have these ends, but I'm like, man, I'm not really that worried about them because actually that's going over these pieces and I might just need to take one little bobby pin and tweak that. And this is another reason, guys, that I just say keep moving on. If you make everything perfect, you're going to drive yourself crazy and you're going to spend way too much time. These pieces are not finished, they're the ends of another section, but if I'm going to literally take this and ruche right over the top of them, then it's as easy as me taking one pin and tucking these up underneath. And that's why I'm so adamant about move on, move on, move on. Don't worry, don't nitpick, just move on. Get the majority of the style up and then, and then we can finish it off. So you can see that that basically just hit everything. All I have is these little tiny crappy ends. And all I'm gonna do is take one little bobby pin Again, I'm going to take my trick. I'm going to put the whole bobby pin on the end so I encapsulate all the ends. And then I'm literally just going to roll this bobby pin around the ends. And it's like literally rolling the ends right in and just sticking it up somewhere. So I've like basically taken all those flyaways and just hit them. All right. And then other side. And this Ching Yang is still down. So again, these ends might be hidden with that. I'm not 100% sure. I, I want to give myself a little leeway on this finish style. So last section. Again, I'm going to do it from the front. I want to make sure that I see what she's seeing. And trying to, again, make sure that I'm going to be in the direction that this is going to fall because I don't want to style it here and then move it here and have this like disconnect. You guys can see that disconnect right up at the top. So we want to make sure that we're brushing or smoothing whatever we're doing in the direction that it's going to fall. And if I was doing this in the salon, I'd be standing over here pulling that. I'm just going to 
fake it till I make it with you guys here. Let's see. There we go. It's like doing hair backwards. Rish that. All right, now I'm gonna move over. Do you guys have any questions so far? How's everyone feeling? Yeah, so, there's two yeah. questions on here. Do you prefer the hair wash the day before compared to on the day of? Um, I don't necessarily mind. I'm actually kind of I don't kind of go through that whole like come with your hair dirty thing. I would rather my guests come with their hair clean and I tell them what to put in it and if they come with their hair like super clean, I always consider hair a fabric. So in order to work on hair, it needs to be a nice starchy cotton. So if one is silk and 10 is burlap, I want to be like a six, like a starchy cotton. So if they come in with like, you know, a satin or a silk or anything like a microfiber, mm -hmm. um, I will put a mousse in their hair really quick on dry and just blow dry it in really fast just to give myself some foundation. So I'd rather their hair come, I'd rather they come in clean. Okay, and then would you say that using an elastic when ruching makes it more secure? Um, yes, I think that anytime you wanna really expand the texture and expand the twist, an elastic will always make it more secure. And then a bobby pin or a hair pin will place place it. So if I know I didn't put elastics on every single end that I put in here, but if she was a client that was gonna be dancing all night or something, I would probably elastic all these ends just to make it really, really, really secure. And then I could also really expand this texture. All right, so I'm gonna get to the back. All right, now we've got this last section I pinned in right here. Now we're gonna finish this off. So I've got these ends that I'm not a huge fan of. Now this is where you could pick up your iron if you wanted, and you could just hit that little bit mm -hmm. if you wanted. Um, if you're gonna smooth out the sides with the iron, you know, why not? I'm gonna, for the sake of this though, I'm gonna do my little bobby pin, hide the bobby pin technique, just so you guys can see again. So just twisting these ends around the bobby pin to twist them in and then just go in and pin that in. And now I'm going to figure out how I wanna finish this tail off. So this was my chignon. I'm going to go in and literally just, I think, keep expanding this a little. Now, this one had an elastic in, so I can really kind of pull on it and really expand it. Again, taking my, and you guys can see I'm using different color bobby pins, just so you can see that I'm not, it's not the same color as the hair. I would recommend that you use the same color as the hair bobby pins. Um, I use blend right bobby pins. Um, they're actually a bobby pin that a lot of Hollywood hairdressers use. They're matte. Actually, this is a blend right bobby pin. Um, I'll show you. This is a blend right bobby pin. It is. This is a blonde, it's like a taupe blonde. So they're matte and they come in like blonde, white, taupe, light brown, dark brown, black. And I love these because they're really invincible in the hair, even if you don't hide them all. Um, all right, so using my hair pins, hair pins again, guys, are great. I get these ones actually, the serrated hair pins at Sally's because they have a little grip on them. They're not just smooth. But I use hairpins to really like place hair that I'm totally unsure of before I want to secure it. 
I also use hairpins to expand shapes as well. So I'm just going to use hairpins until I'm 100% committed to where I want the finish of this to be. And then I'll go in and bobby pin it in. And then I'm just going to start ruching this out. So these little guys were my, my only ends that I still have left out. I'm kind of actually liking these. I might just take my iron now and kind of hit these. Um, I don't know. I think that you can see that if she was kind of like a boho look, taking that might create a little bit more severity where yeah. having a little bit of softness, softness is really nice. And you can just then, now this is like the only part that you have to iron. I also love these mint tools. I don't know if you guys have heard of this company, but they're from Canada. And the reason I love this is look at how long these barrels are. So if you think about how fast I can curl a head of hair, if I had to curl it, it is so fast. Like I use this on my hair in the morning and I can curl my entire head in like three minutes. So they're, I just really like these curling irons. So I'll just go in and I'm basically just creating a little bit of a sealed, sealed ends here. And I'm going to go in and just do it in different directions. And that creates a nice little, nice little finish. And then I'm just going to seal the ends of these little whimsical pieces that I left out to. And in order to do this, I always like Philip Wolf actually taught me this is that little drop the tip technique. So you don't get such a spiraled curl. So you're always just kind of dropping the tip under and it just creates a nice like little wave rather than such a curl. So I'll show you on this side again. So I'm working that cuticle and I'm, I'm doing a rotation. And then as I walk my, my hair out, I take the tip of the iron and I'm dropping it underneath the hair and then walking it back out, taking the tip of the iron, dropping it underneath the hair and I'm going to keep repeating that so I don't get such a tight curl. It's a little bit more of a loose kind of twist. So for me, Danielle, just being somebody that's not huge in upstyling, you know, I always think when I see those beautiful twists that you have in the hair, to me, <laughs> it looks like you curled the hair, but when in actuality, you really just did a quick five minute, you put texture into the hair with your iron before, just to put the texture in there and that, you know, like to kind of give you your base. Yeah. And then you actually, you actually came back and just with your bare hands, you just twisted the hair and pinned it in sections. And it really looks to me like, like you curled those pieces when in fact it was just you twisting, twisting the hair and pulling it back. Yeah, and like I said at the beginning, when I actually teach this, I call it hair mapping in the mm -hmm. salon, I don't, I don't, it's, curling iron is not on the tool list. And I don't even let anyone curl the mannequin's hair. So I'm like, no, because I want you guys to think completely outside the box and like, don't use a curling iron because otherwise it's just going to be your crutch. You're always going to go to it. So, you know, being able to style hair without, without an iron, there's so many benefits to it. A, it's going to speed your time up. B, if you're like on a location wedding, you don't always know that you're going to have a plug or, you know, like you, you never know. So being able to like, you know, we rely so much on our tools where I think that if we start relying a little bit more on, you know, what we know our hands and, you know, these, these ideas of using twists and everything to create volume and texture. And I hope you guys understood now the difference between braids and twists, because that's one of the questions I always get is like, can you do the same thing with braids? Yes, you can totally do the same thing with braids, but you're going to flatten off the shape rather than make a, create a cylinder or volume. 
So I think she's done. Can you guys see her? She's so gorge. So again, I think that, you know, for if I wasn't talking through this, I could have probably knocked this out in 10 minutes at the most. So being able to, you know, execute a style like this in 10 minutes, I think is huge. And I really, really, these are great. This is great to practice while we're home right now because you know, you can you can really understand this whole hair mapping idea. And, you know, I think you'll be able to break down a picture because if you think if you look at it, this is so Pinterest, right? Because this first section, that orbital section is where all that like ruching and then they always put like a braid right here. So like if you think about it, all those braided styles that have a braid right here and have like this like volume right here, that's exactly what they're doing. So if I wanted to take this entire front section, instead of uh, uh, diagonally dividing it to like twist it back, I could do an entire braid to that front section and incorporate it into the back. And then if I also, you're seeing those half up, half down, so if I didn't do anything with the nape and I secured the tail, the orbital first ring, uh -huh. and then I did my braid right here and that wrapped around across the ring and maybe I did a braid on this side. So they like covered the tail, the elastic, and then all of this is down. So it's really like, it's really what you're seeing most of the styles. This map will work with most of those. And like I said, if the hair is living up here, then you're literally taking your ring or your orbital section and you're shifting it into a horseshoe. And then you're dividing still the front to the back. And then you're just, instead of dipping this way, you're just coming up this way because you're coming off your horseshoes. So you might have your two occipital sections and then your two nape sections so very simple very good so many people have said things you know there's hearts they've learned so much i think <laughs> oh really really amazing it's so beautiful thank you thank you yeah if you guys want any more i'm i'm I love actually doing these <laughs> I, I never in a million years like I was like no you know let's Alfredo has like really showed me a lot of like amazing social media stuff and I was a little like camera shy at first and now I've been doing so many lives with this COVID I'm like just keep handing them to me. <laughs> Send me questions. I'll get on and do a tutorial. So. Do you use a finishing spray when you're done? So I do, I use, there's two that I like. Um, I use my high amplify from the matrix total results. Mm -hmm. And then I'm still kind of a fan of my style. Um, my style link, my volume fixer. Um, this is, they're both really good, strong hairsprays. And I will, I will use texture builder and height riser usually mm -hmm. for the majority of the foundation. I might use the volume building mousse really quick to blow in some foundation if they come with their hair just like silk, you know, and I put that on, it's a very, it's got a watery texture. Um, so I put that on dry and just hit it with my blow dryer as fast as I possibly can. It's not like a blowout or anything like that. Um, it's just to get some oomph in there and then spray them with texture builder, dry texturizing spray. And then, you know, I start working and I only pick up my curling iron if I have to. So like get in with your sectioning, go. And if you need to put a little oomph or a little heat to one section, okay, fine. Go ahead and do that. If it's going to give you some volume or take your uh, micro crimper, like Sam Via has one, Christopher Benson has one. Yeah. You can use that within the section. You don't have to micro crimp the whole section, but if you just go in and kind of randomly give a little crimp, you won't actually even see the crimp as long as the key to crimping is you guys have to brush it out with a cushion brush. So if you micro crimp hair, it will give it volume. 
But if you don't want to see the crimp, you have to go in and brush it out really well with a cushion brush and it will break it up and you won't be able to actually see it, but it will give you a very expanded texture. So you're, you're good to use irons and heat on here, but you know, thinking of it without and then going back and only using it where you need to is going to save you so much, so much time and effort that you'll you'll be able to make more money, really. You know, if we can knock out an upsell in 15 minutes, you know, you now you if you have a party of 10 bridesmaids and you're dictating three or four hairdressers to the entire bridal party, you're not making that much money. But if two people can do the entire bridal party, like that's cash in the pocket. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have, um, Danielle, women who you had already booked in for a uh, wedding? I was thinking the same thing. That are able to <laughs> yeah. do it now? So what are they going to do? And how are you helping them? Yeah. Right now, I'm communicating with them because I don't know. Like, you know, we're still kind of like, we don't know exactly when every state's going to be able to, like, open back up. So we're in communication. I've basically... And, and honestly, and some of them have hair extensions then, which is an, a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother thing. Um, so just a lot of talking and kind of what you said earlier, you know, it, it, Sean hit it on the, he said it perfectly. They don't, people are, they don't really know, like we're hairdressers. We know what to expect because we know hair, but I feel kind of the same as he said it. Like if we didn't know, like most of our clients, we just assume because they're so close to us that they know as much as we do, they don't. And I can't even imagine. I mean, I know how I am about my hair. I can't imagine not having a hair background and not knowing when the next time I was going to be able to get my color done or my yeah. extensions. And that's really nerve wracking. I mean, I always say your hair is your, your crown, right? And I would much rather have beautiful hair and that be known than and wear a white t-shirt, you know, like people are always like, Oh, you have great style, but I, it's, I, nobody ever sees me without my hair done, you know, very often. I mean, and if it's in a top knot, it's still styled. And so yeah. your hair, if you wore your, if you have good hair, you can wear a white t-shirt and jeans every day and look fantastic. Right. And I can't imagine not knowing hair and not knowing when I was going to be able to like get my hair done or it's really nerve wracking. So I think communicating with these brides and communicating with your guests, um, even though it takes a lot of time, it's, it's so important right now. You know, it really is. It is important. And I think if we have guests, we would have been doing them. And since we're not, maybe we have the time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was thinking the same thing. I mean, I think it's a really good way to put, we're talking about this restlessness, you know, or, or getting out of ourselves and doing something like contacting our clients right now, just saying, how are you doing? You know, how's your hair? And, and just the emotional piece, it almost sets us up a little bit too for when we do go back. If we're having those communications, we've talked to them through some of those things already. So when they come in, it's not this influx of information that's being thrown at us. We're, you know, back to the protecting our vessel, Sherry, right? We're setting those boundaries and having those communications with them leading up to when we get to see them again. It's funny, too, yeah. because <laughs> yeah. you're right. And you kind of said it earlier, Alfredo, is like, you know, you had you were in a funk and then you got on the phone and you like talked it out. And sometimes you you. I'm sure that there's hairdressers out there right now that are like, I don't even, I'm so, and I've, cause I, I know, cause I've heard it. I don't even like, I don't care to be productive. I don't want to like do anything right now. It's, you know, like I'm so depressed. I'm losing money. I'm in a, like, I'm in a bad place right now. And all I can say with that said is no matter how funky I feel when I get on a coaching call and I'm helping somebody or I get on a FaceTime call and I see my client smile and like I'm taking away some like anxiety. It how I felt 
prior to me picking up that phone and doing the FaceTime or prior to me picking up that phone and doing my coaching call, I might feel totally drained and go, I don't know if I can, I, I'm just tired today. I don't know if I can give myself. But if you can get yourself past that point and you do it, you're, you're I guarantee you every single time you're going to get off the phone and off that FaceTime and you're going to go, oh my God, that actually made me feel better. Yeah. You know, and that's, Absolutely. that's a common thing that all hairstylists share is we're all hairstylists and we're in this industry, not by chance. We all have that same personality and that does feed us. And we're missing a lot of that human interaction right now because we're quarantined. So if you can, even if it feels overwhelming and uninspiring at the moment, if you can just make yourself do it, you'll feel better. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Two things come to mind. One is that, you know, we say serve somebody who needs more help than you do, right? And that's your point that you're making is that our guests, I was just thinking about when I had guests that would come in on a regular and each one that sat there, they weren't like, my life is amazing. I have nothing to talk about. They were like, I am so mad at my kid, my boss, my husband, my sister, my nephew, my, you know, we are that, we are that confidant for them. And so we, I keep going back to, we need to be that confidant for them right now because they need us more than, more than we actually know. And in the absence of a plan, take action. So when you take action, it automatically will you know, put you in motion, but the lack of action sort of keeps you out of motion. So, That's Danielle, so you, you, um, you, you, I'm not giggling. Alfredo eats on every call. That <laughs> so, we're on calls all day long. I'm like, I don't know where you put it. He must have like <laughs> today. Today, I ate very little in the morning, and then I had a quick uh -huh. snack. And I'm sitting here going, I saw this protein bar to my left, and I was like. <laughs> I need a bite. I need a <laughs> like, oh. It's all good. I just, I tease him a lot. Because <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, you I was like, maybe she won't notice if I do it real quick. <laughs> well, then I also just am going to recognize it for all the people that are watching. Alfredo, <laughs> a lot. But look how good he had his gun down. <laughs> Food is definitely a thing with me. Yeah, hey, I get it. <laughs> uh, Danielle, we'll keep smiling, keep bringing amazing inspiration, uh, keep bringing, being the bright angel of hope that you are in this world because people need it. They need you. They need these amazing techniques. And everyone watching, make sure that you are absolutely following Danielle at Danielle Keesling on Instagram because she shares such amazing tips on hair, but also just on life in general. And for that, we are super grateful. So thank you, Danielle. Thank you guys for having me. Love you, Danielle. Thank you so much. It was amazing. <laughs>